Hello, hello, hello. This is Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. Today I want to talk about why I love it here. Here are some reasons why I love it here. This is a lot, this is really, um, it goes back into the reason I came here. And it's exactly what I thought it was going to be because I did a lot of research on where I wanted to live, where I wanted to go, Mexico, where I, Panama, Columbia, where I want to live, you know, and I did a lot of research. Hawaii. I was thinking about moving to Hawaii. Couldn't afford it. And then I thought, well, I can afford it if I do this. Well, you can, but I'd be eating, uh, it'd be really it, costly because, you know, I found nice places there I could stay in Hawaii. Uh, rent was, uh, I had a friend that had owned uh, apartments. He's going to give me rent. Rent was still 300 a month, but still, it's it's not that. It was all the other foods and all the other activities there and things like that just to live there. Because it's expensive in the islands, as you know. A can of Spam is two, three times the cost. But they have here in the Philippines, the reason why I love it here and why it's so wonderful for me is here. Number one is it's got family values. The people are still family oriented here. Uh, the families come first. No matter if there's a squabble in the family, they still stick together. If they argue and fight and they get mad and they split off, but at the end of the day, somebody's sick, someone is there. They come back. And that's what I love. No matter, no matter. And if if someone gets in a bad situation for whatever reason, they still they still they put their quarrels to side. And I found that with with not just one, many uh, many people that I've known here. They work together as a team, of course. And you'll find that there's more than one family, some one family member in the house. There's maybe brother, cousin, sister, or cousins, or aunts and uncles, or grandpa, grandma living, and that's fine. That's wonderful. I love that. I love that they don't throw you out in the field when you get old here. They don't set you in a nursing home. That's the reason I love it here. So if a person gets sick, uh, someone is not feeling well, or they they're say they're mentally challenged, something happens. They just don't throw you away. They take care of you. They wake up every morning. They still give them baths. They'll feed you. They take care of you. I see that all the time, and I just love it. I saw a gentleman yesterday at the market being carried by family members and just taken care of, and I, I love that. In America, as you know, we put them in a nursing home, or, you know, it's, it's hard to have the time, you know. And it's not because we don't care. We don't have time. We're too busy trying to survive. Paying the bills, uh, jobs, life, you know, trying to maintain a lifestyle there. So, uh, so like, and another thing I love here is when someone is hungry or someone needs something here, uh, a neighbor needs rice, a neighbor needs food, they give it to them. They don't expect it back. They don't say, hey, pay me back tomorrow. They don't say anything. Somebody needs 50 peso for, for rice, they go give them, they give them the money. And that's what I like. Neighbors help neighbors. And it's, how many of you, you know, how, I, I mean, I, my neighbors in USA, I didn't know them. I mean, I knew them, took a while, but I didn't know them. So, you know, here, you, you may not know them, but you know them, but they're, they're, they'll be there for you. I had a flat tire, okay? I'm in town in the car. I had a flat tire in the car. So, I pull off the road, tire's flat. I pull off in there. There was a guy come out from the house I was parked at. And he says, sir, you okay? I said, I'm fine. It's flat tire. And it's just me and Chit Chit. So uh, I get out of the car. And I said, where's the jack at? You know, I'm looking for the jack. So we get, he goes, it's over there, sir. It's underneath. It's over there in a the corner, you know, on the side thing. So we get it out. Well, he helps me change the tire. Well, how can you beat that? The tricycle guy, we tag a guy down. She, she takes it. I stay with the car. And she go gets fixed. As I'm standing there in the sun, the guy comes. Come over here. Sit in the shade. I got a chair. Put a chair out there in the shade for me. Sir, you want something to drink? I said, No, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Put a chair out in the shade for me and stood there and just we just talked. Then when the tire came back, I got up, put it on there, and and you know gave the guy some money. I gave the guy money. He said, Sir, no, no, no. You don't. No, no. I said, No. You took your time out. You took care of me. I said, thank you very much. And I gave him some money. And it's like, it's like yesterday. I was at the market. This gentleman came up to me. Farmer. He's a farmer. Nobody would buy his potatoes. 
he had uh, two, three kilo of potatoes with him. Beautiful potatoes, man. He, you can tell. He, he's a farmer. He's, he, he, he need, you know, he needed money. And I said, how much? You know, hundred pesos. So okay, you know, that's all right. The nice potatoes. I like potatoes. So guess what? I bought them from him. He had the biggest grin on his face. And I know what that grin was about. I've had that grin before. Like the check finally arrived that I've been waiting for. You know? I finally got paid today. That feeling like that. So now he knows he can go take care of whatever that he needs to take care of. It's probably food. Or it's probably rice. You never know. Um, and you know what <laughs> and you know what I think a lot of times is what I enjoy here more than anything else is they're they're happy no matter uh, any situation that they're in, they're happy. They're they're uh, content. If a bill is due, they do the best they can. But I I love their their nature about them, about being content of what they do have, and um, they don't worry about it. Uh, and I love that. I love the 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 culture. I love the attitude. I love the people here. Uh, Americans could learn a lot from the Filipino uh, culture. They could learn how to actually be more respectful, uh, more genuine, uh, uh, like that. Because uh, a prime example, I was at the market yesterday and I was talking and I saw some American and a British guy. Just rude, just rude. You know, and I'm thinking, why are you rude? The ladies didn't say anything to you and you're being rude. So that's something to always think about and look at. Uh, it should not be rude to someone that's not being rude to you. It's about being respectful. But at the end of the day, you, I like to be treated like I treat someone. And I treat everybody the same. And I treat everybody with respect. And I think everybody should too here. Um, I know that, I know for me personally, I like, to, I like being here because it's, it's calmer. Uh, the environment's calmer, causes me to be calmer. When I go somewhere, I'm calmer. I don't have the stress and the anxiety of driving down, say, I-40 or I-4 or I-95 or being in the city of New York or being in Boston or being in even Orlando or Miami, Florida. Or you could just sit in Dayton at my house because it can be, it can be something else there too. Um, my last day, I would say this real quick and I'm going to get off here. My last two days in America before I came here, I was working and I was finishing up all my duties at the front desk clerk. I worked nights at the front desk clerk. It was one of the jobs that I had at a hotel. Two cops ran into the parking lot at the hotel. I did was not aware of something happened. Somebody called 911. As they get out, I run outside. Get both go in the, in the up, run upstairs. And the cops, one of them says, "It's okay, sir. We got it. That's okay. Whatever." So, a guy riding his bicycle right down the street throws his bicycle on the ground, takes one of the police cars, and takes off up the road. I yelled out, "Guys, your car is being stolen by a guy on a bicycle over there." I go, "What?" I said, "You left your car running. The door wide open." And the other guy's yelling at the other guy and this and that. So anyway, they, the two get in one car, they take off. Well, it wasn't three minutes later. Uh, boom, 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 cars going, chasing. You know, 10, 15 cars going this way, chasing this guy. Then like four or five minutes later, another three, four cars going. State troopers. I mean, I don't know, 30 cars were chasing this one guy that stole his car. It's a cop car. So a few minutes later... I could see the guy coming out from the side street right in front of my hotel. I go, that's the guy. Lights are running, no siren, right? All of a sudden, he gets, makes a right, goes down the street. All of a sudden, the cops, I guess, see him. So they're coming back. I mean, you could just see him. They got all four lanes of the road occupied. 
I mean, they're coming like like bullets chasing this guy down. So the guy sees him coming. So as they're, they're approaching him, he gets smart. He makes a U-turn real quick, comes back around some of the hotel, comes back around where the cops did not block off all the intersections. He comes right back up, pulls in the parking lot where the car was originally in, in the where I was working, takes jumps out of the car, runs straight into the ocean because it was a beach hotel. Right straight in the ocean. I mean, it was dark. It was getting dark. It's probably 9.39. It's already dark, but it's middle of summer. It's darker. So sure enough, the guy goes straight in the ocean. Well, oh, man, they went out there. There was many. There was even on the four-wheelers, cops, beach patrol, everybody. They even brought a guy, swimmers, beach guys, out there trying to find this guy. They never found it. Spike's still on the side of the road. I said, there's his bike. Nobody cared. Well, I worked till 11 o'clock. At 10.30, this guy's walking up in the parking lot, just soaking wet. Gets on his bike, and he starts riding the bike down the road. They never did catch the guy. Now, was that stressful? It was funny, but it was still stressful for me. I don't know what happened in the hotel, but that happened all the time. I went through so much of that. Just stuff like that. Every day was something happening. You know, fire or something. Something happening somewhere. I want to thank everybody for watching my videos. Thank you very much. Please subscribe and please hit like.